Good morning everybody. I'm Sohail Madan. I'm from Bombay Natural History Society. And I'm Nikhil John from WWF India. And today we'll be taking you through this wonderful and amazing world of these fascinating insects called as dragonflies and damselflies. Come, let's look around and see if we can find some dragonflies and damselflies. It's a great day to be looking at dragonflies. You can see that it's sunny, it's hot and humid. A perfect day for dragonfly watching. Come, let's look up at the sky and see the dragonflies flying around. Dragonflies are fascinating insects. They belong to a group called Odonatas. Odonata group is made up of two uh, organisms, dragonflies and damselflies and they can be easily differentiated. Damselfly, as the name goes, has a slender body, whereas dragonflies have stout, fatter bodies. There are other ways you can differentiate between them when you go out looking for dragonflies and damselflies, and you see uh, them sitting or perched on a flower or a plant. If you look at the way they are sitting, their positions are completely different. A dragonfly will keep its wings, both pair of the wings open, whereas a damselfly will keep it closed. Being cold-blooded creatures, odonates try to raise their body temperature by basking in the sun. In the mornings, they'll come and sit on a branch and they'll keep their wings outstretched. So this behavior is actually known as basking posture. So to prevent themselves from overheating, on a hot, sunny day, odonates will pick up the tip of the abdomen and they will raise it up to the sky, minimizing the surface area exposed to the sun. This is known as the oblique posture. In the evening, as the sun sets, dragonflies and damselflies move towards low grasses, bushes or trees to rest. This is known as the resting or the roosting position. When you're observing these insects, do look at their heads very closely. Their heads are made up of very big eyes. And if the eyes are further apart, it's a damselfly. And if the eyes are closer together, it's a dragonfly. A very neat way to understand what you're looking at. They have great eyesight with lots of small lenses put together for one eye, which is called the compound eye, and this is what makes them a great aerial threat. They have to see their prey to actually catch it, and they are the most aerodynamic insect around. They uh, can fly backwards, forward, upwards, downwards, the greatest flyers you can see around. Dragonflies have three body parts, the head, thorax, and the abdomen. And their most striking feature is their mandibles, which are really, really strong. It enables them to be the apex uh, insect predator around in our backyards. You know, you'll see a lot of dragonflies hovering over the water. Have you ever wondered what is happening? So the female dragonflies are actually trying to lay eggs by dipping their abdomen, which is the last part of their body segment, inside the water. You might also see some of the dragonflies perching on some water plant. Uh, they'll sit on it, they'll put their abdomen inside the water and they lay eggs. Some of the damselflies submerge their body inside water and they lay eggs for around 20 to 30 minutes. Dragonfly goes through what we call an incomplete metamorphosis, where it starts its life underwater or just on the surface as an egg. And that goes on to become a nymph, which is a long living being, stays in the water for about six months to up to six years. 
It stays in the water, feeds on the larvae of different insects like mosquitoes inside the water and when it's time to become a dragonfly, an adult dragonfly, it comes out, finds a perch of a lily plant or a bamboo or any plant next to the pond, comes out, gets rid of its shell and a brand new dragonfly emerges. As dragonflies have such a deep connection with water, they are an important indicator to the health of the wetlands. With climatic changes, pollution and degradation, we are losing our wetlands. Our waterways are polluted and choked with plastic waste. This is causing a decline in the population of dragonflies and damselflies across the country. A decline in the odonates will lead to an alarming rise in the population of mosquitoes which cause diseases like dengue and malaria. If our wetlands are surviving and clean, it will be a boost to a dragonfly population and as a result, control these diseases. Apart from keeping a check on mosquito populations by feeding on these insects, they are also a source of food for other organisms like birds, lizards, spiders, and this makes them very important for an ecosystem as lots of other beings depend on them. So, we need to start looking at our wetlands, start monitoring them, getting people together to start conservation and awareness movements around dragonflies, around wetlands. People can participate in the Dragonfly Festival, tell their family and friends uh, about the uh, walks and virtual talks, plus webinars happening in their cities. Uh, this is a pan-India event and uh, citizen science programs like this have a great future and they are a step forward towards dragonfly conservation. So what are you waiting for? Go out, explore and discover the wonderful dragonflies and damselflies around you.